Hey everybody, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra. I am here with a uh, national subject matter expert, Masad Ayub. And I hear from people from time to time that Masada Ayub says you should never modify the trigger of a defensive firearm. So I'm gonna get it straight from the horse's mouth today. Today's video is brought to you by Magtech Ammunition, the exclusive supplier of range ammunition for all active self-protection training. So Moss, you have been, I, I, now I'm not saying you've said this, I'm saying folks say, Masada Yub says, never modify a trigger on a carry gun at all. Is that what you've said? Well, there are folks who say Hillary Clinton supports the Second Amendment, too. Uh, Oof, duh. <laughs> no, that's not a quote from me where I first started hearing that uh, back, I think, in the 1980s. I did an article for Combat Handguns magazine where I interviewed a very experienced uh, trial lawyer who had become so after many years as a homicide detective in a major city. And what he told me, he had uh, managed, without the department noticing, to uh, they were allowed to carry a 1911 Colt 45 auto. He carried one that had been modified by King's Gun Works with the whole nine yards and about a two and a half pound trigger. Ooh. And he said, you know, I'm really glad I never got into a shooting with that particular gun because what I saw as an attorney was again and again, not only the gun unintentionally going off in a stressed out hand, but the false allegation that it happened. And I had done uh, one such case with him. We fortunately won the acquittal, but it took almost nine weeks to do it. And the point he made is the point that, you know, I share now. Uh, he said, well, let, let me qualify that. He said, I just carry stock guns from now on. Now, that was 30 some years ago. Uh, he carried then an unmodified HK P7. Uh, today, Which is a pretty big flex if you're carrying a P7. Anyways, mm -hmm. keep going. <laughs> and uh, today, uh, last I knew, was carrying a uh, Glock with a, uh, a Gen 3 Glock with a New York trigger. Oof, uh, for terrible trigger. a but... total about eight pound pull. Now, in my case, my feeling is where, where I've seen it happen first on a double action revolver. Back in the service revolver days and when so many citizens carried those instead of autos. It was epidemic to see them trying to turn a justified shooting into an indefensible accident. Okay? They, they learn in law school there's no such thing as a justifiable accident. They know that self-defense, once established, is a perfect defense. And that, uh, what motivates the, uh, the politically motivated prosecutor to fabricate such a case is it's simply a lower bar, as you saw in today's moot court. Mm charging murder with the where you have to establish the element of malice is a high bar it is a high and bar and you saw none of the jurors in today's shooting voted to convict for that i was the defendant too so that made me feel good <laughs> and i saved him he owes me big that's time. right i owe him big time but uh to just to, to convince 12 ordinary people that somebody just like them could just for one second be careless and make a mistake is a whole lot lower hanging fruit that's easier to apply. And the prosecutor doesn't get bonus points for a conviction for murder instead of manslaughter. A conviction is a win for the office, period. Now, on the civil lawsuit side, we've seen them pull the same exact thing, but it's a different motive. In the civil lawsuit, they're looking for the big bucks. Most of you re listening to this or watching this are smart enough not to have a liquid million or so in assets laying around unprotected that the plaintiff's lawyers can seize to satisfy the judgment if they win. But most of us do have a million dollar homeowner liability, million dollar automobile liability policy. So if the situation arises out of you had to shoot the carjacker in self-defense, you had to shoot the road rage guy in self-defense, the auto insurance company has the money. And the same with the home insurance company, if you've had to shoot the burglar that you caught in your home and he came at you, or uh, had to shoot a home invader. If the, the plaintiff's lawyer presents the case that, well, I believe John Correa shot, him to satis shot my poor innocent client to satisfy his racist bloodlust or something like that, the attorney for the insurance company is going to jump up and say, thank you, plaintiff's counsel. Your Honor, move to dismiss my client and the insurance company because here's our policy and we don't cover that. 
Look at your own homeowner or auto liability policy. So they don't the, cover you know, yeah. intentional acts. And yeah, read the proverbial fine print. It exempts them from having to pay for intentional acts. An intentional <laughs> act of harming another unlawfully is what's called a willful tort in civil law. All they have to do is change their theory of the case. And mm. we have all got to remember, if you've got someone unscrupulous enough to bring a false allegation, they can get to say whatever they want. What you and I would call utter BS, when it's uttered by attorney, is dignified as the plaintiff's theory of the case and has to be taken seriously. Mm. So if you have anything that the general public would tend to logically associate with an accidental discharge, the so-called hair trigger, there's no bright line definition of that in the black letter law, the statutes, the right. codes, et cetera. Okay, it's, uh, there's really, among shooters, different bright lines. There really is. So what you've got to look at here, they're alleging that you are culpable of negligence for either uh, wrongfully adjusting a machine or having a wrongfully adjusted machine that you got from somebody else, but you were responsible for it being properly adjusted as the owner. So in any case like that, whether it's a gun or a defective automobile, they're going to come from one or both of two directions. Common custom and practice. How do they normally adjust the brakes on this particular model of Chevrolet? Or for the gun, what is the factory spec for a duty weight trigger pull? And the term duty weight is kind of a code. Uh, it doesn't mean it's not limited to a police or security or military service pistol. It means any gun that's intended for self-defense use under high stress as opposed to, say, a dedicated target pistol mm -hmm. or even a hunting gun. Sure. Okay. The, uh, the other standard will be the manufacturer's specification for a minimum duty weight pull. So it, that will vary gun to gun simply because the guns themselves differ, just they like do. the specs for a Ford versus Chevrolet brakes would differ. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the 1911, it seems to have settled right around four pounds as absolute minimum red line for the cock and lock 1911. As the common custom and practice. Correct. Uh, Colt Factory, which has produced it longer than anyone else, literally since the year 1911 uninterrupted, including by world wars, uh, tells their armorers minimum red line for a duty gun as opposed to a target pistol is four pounds. And when you start seeing it again and again and again, we have that common custom and yeah. practice, and the jury becomes convinced, yeah, this is how the professionals do this stuff. Now, it's going to be real hard for us to go in and say, well, gee, I know more about my Colt 1911 than John Moses Browning on the Colt factory. Right. And when they're trying to paint you as reckless, you say, you being so, they associate recklessness with arrogance. Mm. I think the whole general public, which is the jury pool, does so in this country. You say, I know more about the machine than the manufacturer. I know more about my Chevrolet than General Motors. The jury's eyes are going to glaze over and your credibility is going to go down the right. toilet. We get the, arg uh, the argument we can use for many modifications, the, the, uh, the night sights, for example, or custom grips, or a grip stippling or a grip reduction that better fits the shooter's hand. Our argument is, look, it doesn't make it dangerous in any way. It makes the gun safer because my client can shoot it better, and anything that allows him to shoot better under stress or other That's adverse conditions is going to concomitantly reduce the danger of a wild shot that could strike a bystander. The problem trying to apply that to the light trigger is that the long history going back into the 19th century of, you know, use hair triggers for target. If you barely touch it and it goes off, that, ladies yeah, yeah. and gentlemen of the jury, is a hair trigger. And it's not to be used under high stress, or it's going to go off. The, the it's no different than a hunting rifle with a two-pound trigger. Exactly. It's going to go off negligently, and exactly. then you're culpable for the negligence. Yeah, the, the common, you can't beat common sense. And common sense tells us if it makes it easier to shoot intentionally, it makes it easier to shoot unintentionally. And that simply is going to outweigh any better benefits. <clears throat> the other thing is, one of, the, one of these strategies against this false allegation is going to be a show, look, my client is literally a gun expert. We'll show you all his training. We'll show you all the history of him competently using it under, under stressful conditions, et cetera, et cetera. You undermine that when you give the other side to say, ladies and gentlemen, 
The jury would, the, the defense attorney would have you believe the defendant is a gun expert. But he's just admitted he can't hit a target this big without his special orthopedic pistol. Mm. And it's going to be tough to get past that with the common sense that pervades, hopefully, the jury. Learn to shoot the gun. It's not about the weight. It's about the smoothness. Uh, I'm carrying a custom gun today. A, uh, so Ernest this is this is evidence. When you say never do anything other than the manufacturer, that is a oh sure. This is a Langton Custom uh, Beretta LTT. I didn't get it from the gun shop. Who got it from Beretta? I got it from Ernest Langton. LTT Elite 92, beautiful gun. A very sweet gun. That's why I'm carrying it. <laughs> uh, the double action pull is down to about eight pounds from you know as much as 12 or 14 on some specimens of that series gun I've seen. Yep. But there's no such thing as an eight-pound hair trigger, particularly right. with a, a long movement. And many of us in the business feel the shorter trigger pull is actually more conducive to an unintended discharge than the lighter pull. Uh, on single action, it's well above the four-pound standard for a single action pull. This gun, the last time I weighed the trigger, was four and a half to five pounds. Okay. So we don't have time to discuss every gun that's out there. What you want to do is contact the factory that manufactured your preferred carry or home defense pistol. And actually, any gun you're likely to be using for serious self-defense. Ask them what is the, your minimum pull weight spec. Ask them to send that to you by email. Archive it and keep hard copies. Buy yourself, if you don't have one already, a trigger pull gauge. Uh, the uh, Lyman digital gauge is excellent. It's $35, $40. Yeah, not from, much. Buy it off Amazon. Else. And basically, in so far as triggers, that's the deal. Uh, now, I, I think, so what I'm hearing, Moss, yeah. is um, watch the, what is the normal use, what is the, the industry standard, and, and that's something to pay very special attention to, that something like an Ernest Langdon tuned trigger, because Ernest is such, seen as such an expert in the industry, oh, absolutely. then that's okay. I, I carry a P30 with a trigger that's installed yeah. by Lazy Wolf Guns by Rick Holm and his team. Uh, I've carried a Gray Guns as well. And so a the, Lem the trigger. Gray Guns, Gray, uh, Bruce Gray is to SIG, what Ernest Langdon is to, uh, is to Beretta. Beretta. Sure. So I think if you're going to do some trigger work, have somebody who is respected in the world do that. So then that way, again, I had it done by an expert. I've tested it that it's in a good spot, that it's not a hair trigger, and I'm careful with that. Well, let me share a, a Bruce Gray quote that I totally agree with. He said, don't worry about light trigger pull, worry about having a smooth trigger pull. Mm. And in all these years, I started doing hair trigger, I've been an expert witness since 1979, did my first hair trigger case in 1984 and several since. <clears throat> Never once have I seen them say the trigger pull was too smooth. Mm. Every single time the allegation was the trigger pull was too light. And therefore you were being negligent. Correct. Uh, the other big thing, do not remove or deactivate a safety device from a Never. pistol. You and I can make a convincing <clears throat> argument for removing the mag disconnector from, say, a Browning High Power, mm -hmm. or, uh, say, from a Smith & Wesson m and uh, the current auto generation, uh, of which the last time I talked to them, about 70% they were selling without the, man the manual safety and only 30% with. So would there be any difference in just taking the one off your pistol, you've got a really good deal on the one with a manual safety and you don't care for the thought. Your problem is you have given the other side the nuclear grade sound bite when mm -hmm. they're trying to show you're reckless and dangerous with guns. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the defendant deactivates the safety devices on lethal weapons. And you're going to have a hell of a time selling that yeah. to 12 people who are literally selected by the other side during jury selection for their lack of knowledge of firearms. So, that's what he says. So don't, I don't want to hear no more about what he doesn't say or what you thought he says. You've heard it from the man's mouth. I think that we be cautious. Don't be a home, home gunsmith. And what, one final thing before we go. No zombie guns. Yeah, please. Or zombie bullets or drooling death's head skulls all over your guns. Uh, do a search for the case of Arizona versus Brailsford, mm -hmm. and you'll get an idea what that can cost you. Thanks, Moss. Really appreciate the knowledge. Thank you, John.